Hey guys, welcome to Cake Walk Cambridge. I'm Aisha, and today you're watching an alternative to practical video that revolves around planning and experiment. Now, this question usually comes for a good six marks, and a lot of kids struggle with it because you are not really sure about what to write. But today, I'm going to break down um the question for you, and every mark um that you get for every every um answer, every point you make in an answer. Okay, I promise you it's easy, and I've always gotten a six on six. And this is actually the most scoring part in your practical paper, and it's a big jump. So just be careful with this, and follow this video to the T, and you'll be good. I promise. So this is general information about which details give you how many marks. So you have your independent. So stating the independent variable in your answer gives you one mark. Um, if you um give a detail of the method that you're going to use, okay. Or your the way you're going to modify the method in the first part of the question, or if you're going to give your own new method, all of these account for only one mark. Um, factors that stay constant, your con your control variables, two marks you get. So you can state even if you state five, you will get only two marks. Safety precaution, you get one mark. Dependent variables, one mark. Controls, one mark. So factors that stay constant are um. those like temperature and ph that have to have the same value in every setup of the experiment and control is basically an experiment setup to test whether the um, variable being tested is the only reason that causes a difference in results okay so if you're investigating the temp uh, the effect of temperature on transpiration a control setup would be uh, the effect of heat on transpiration so a control setup would be um a plant not kept in heat basically so you have to see what other um factors affect transpiration okay um independent variable is a variable that is um not changed at all it doesn't depend on anything it stands alone okay and it influences the results and dependent variable is basically um what gets influenced so if you're investigating the effect of heat on transpiration heat is an independent variable okay because and transpiration is the dependent variable because transpiration is getting affected by heat okay nothing happens to the heat it is just present in the experiment so i'm just going to go over general points and tips that you can include in your answers based on what i've written in past papers okay so if you have an experiment that is to do with measuring the rate of a reaction or measuring the volume of gas produced Okay, over time, we're measuring the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide, which produces water and oxygen. Oxygen is a gas producer. So if you have to investigate anything like that, you can use the first method, which is a gas syringe and delivery tube. So you connect the delivery tube to the gas syringe and you place it inside the setup. And basically, you count, you go measure the volume of gas collected in the gas syringe. Okay, and then to find the rate, you divide the volume of gas by the time. Okay, centimeter cube per second. then you can also use a ruler to measure basically when oxygen or a gas is produced there may be foam above a liquid okay it's come in many experiments including this specimen 2023 so if you use a ruler to measure the height of the foam above the um, liquid you can basically measure the volume or like the amount approximately of the gas produced in the experiment and you divide the height by time to find the rate so centimeter per second okay um then again for a gas you can um, count the number of bubbles produced okay you can divide the number of bubbles per by time to find the rate again then you can use a calorimeter to measure color change now why do you use a calorimeter and not your eye like you can even look at it and say oh it's green to blue that's because vision is subjective so if i see blue someone else may see green okay like for example i have a blanket at home and my dad thinks it's brown but i think it's purple So that's just a small example. So even in errors in an ATP paper, you can always write that vision is subjective and color change may be different to different people. So you use a calorimeter to measure color change. It's way more accurate. Um, then you then measuring the mass of a potato stick before and after putting it in solution. That's basically where you measure the difference in mass. You subtract the smaller value from the greater value to measure the gain or loss of water. So that's for osmosis experiments. then measuring the height um a piece of dough has risen so if basically you have this much dough and then you add like yeast to it it may rise to this much in um slight heat that's because the yeast is respiring anaerobically and producing bubbles of carbon dioxide that cause the dough to rise so by dividing this 
um, change in height by time, you can find the rate of respiration again. Then um, to find um, the um, rate of uptake of water, you can either use a potometer where you basically measure the distance or droplet of water moves along a tube. You can use a ruler along the tube to measure the difference and divide it by time again. And or you can use a stem. OK, you should do this in school, but because of COVID, I'm not really sure. So you cut a section of the plant stem. OK, and you look at the xylem. You, used, you use red color water. Okay, like you stain the water with red dye. OK, and then you see the xylem vessels. If they're red, that means the water has crossed this section of the leaf. And five uh, minutes later, you can cut five centimeters above that mark. If the water is not, if the xylem vessels are not red, it's not reached that part yet. So you can use these sections and divide it by time, length by time to find the rate of reaction again. Okay. Um, basically, this also measures, it does not, not only measure the rate of water uptake, but it could also measure the rate of water loss because the water replaces the water that the plant replaces the water that is that it has lost from transpiration by absorbing more water in again. So these are just basic generic uh, methods that they're used in papers that, that have come repeatedly and frequently that you can use in your answers. You don't, so in the specimen paper, you had the method given was to measure the height of foam, but in the mark scheme, you could also use a gas syringe and delivery tube, or you could count the number of bubbles produced for the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide to produce oxygen. Next, controls, your next segment. So temperature is the first thing it should always control mostly in enzyme um, specific reactions or um, reactions that um, affect transpiration or plants. Temperature, you, it, it's actually based on the experiment itself, but these are very general um, factors that are seen in many mark schemes. So temperature, you can use a thermostatically regulated water bath. You must write the method of how you're going to control the variable. It is important, like it is a must, okay? Never forget that. You never know what will give you a mark. Sometimes it gives you a mark, sometimes it doesn't. So always include it. Then you can use a P, you control the pH by using a pH meter or a buffer solution. You can uh, measure the volume using a measuring cylinder or gas syringe. The size of leaves using a square grid, or you can just write size of leaves, that doesn't matter. Time using a timer or stopwatch. The concentration of a solution and the um, test tube, the size and diameter of a test tube. This depends on, on certain specific experiments. So ensure that whatever control you're writing adheres to the experiment and the method followed. Okay. Okay, safety. Um, so your most common one, even in physics papers, please use this, but don't forget to write average and plot a graph. Because repeating average and plotting a graph not only increases reliability, but it also shows trends, okay, in your experiment. Like higher the concentration, um, higher the um, diffusion, okay, higher the concentration gradient, higher the diffusion. So plotting a graph will actually show you the trend. So always write repeat and don't write twice or once, write thrice. It's a safe bet. Average, average your answers. And so you get one reading and then you plot a graph. Um, then you then eye, eye protection and gloves okay are basically interchangeable you get one mark okay so usually in experiments where you have like fire or like a corrosive liquid or something you can use eye protection also for the water bath part if they write using a water bath in the experiment or like a tub of hot water you can still write temperature as an error okay in your first part of the question because um the temperature of a but a tub containing hot water can keep changing and decreasing because water will evaporate. But if you use a thermostatically regulated water bath, then your temperature is maintained at a constant temperature. Okay, like continuous heat is being supplied to the liquid. Then general tips. So for the independent variable, like supposing state the effect of concentration on diffusion rate, the rate of diffusion, you know that concentration is your independent variable. Diffusion is your dependent variable. So if you're going to um, plan your own investigation based on this, you will have to use three or more variations. So three or more concentrations, okay, have to be used. I always say five because five is the safest, okay? But yeah, five, five. Um, stating a control, okay? So a control, I explained to you what a control is. So we stated you get a mark. Um, then you can either use the method given in your first part of the question and modify it for the six marker. Or you can use another method. I already told you that. Like to measure the volume of gas, measure the height of foam, measure with a gas syringe, or you can count bubbles. 
and the third part is don't spend more than seven minutes on this question. You just have to break it down into independent and dependent variable controls and factors that remain controlled and safety. Or method. Like it's that simple. You get so many marks, you know whatever is gonna give you your marks. So don't spend more than I used to spend five minutes on this question. Don't spend more than that. Okay. It's quite easy, I promise you, and very manageable. Um, now we're going to do a practice question together. This came in your specimen 2023. Um, so basically the first part of the question in the specimen was that catalase um, breaks down um, hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. Okay. So basically to measure the rate of the reaction, a student was given a ruler and yeah, he had to measure the height of the foam produced and divided by time. That gives you the rate of the reaction. So now here the question is, Catalase activity is the same in all species of plants. That's the hypothesis. So planning an investigation to um, test the statement. So now here we're going to look at the dependent variable and the independent variable. Catalase species is the same in all species of plants. Catalase activity is the same in all species of plants. Now here you can see that catalase is one thing. Catalase activity you're only using one variable. And here it says all species of plants. Now if this keeps changing. You know that this is the independent variable. Okay. Since the, since the um, species of plants are going to keep changing in the experiment, you know that it's the independent variable. Okay. Because it has an effect on the dependent variable, which has to be the same. Here it is catalase activity. Okay. So here you will get your dependent variable mark, independent variable mark. And now we're going to look at how to solve this question. Okay, we've already identified two things. Okay, so first you need to state your independent variable. So you're going to use five different species of plants. You get one mark. Now what you're going to do is you are going to, now this is your method mark. Okay, wait, this is a mistake. Um, This is not the, okay, wait. Just don't look at this for now, okay? So, okay, so you've stated, um, so your method mark is actually supposed to be this one. Okay. So basically, first you need to do is state your independent variable. You are going to use five different species of plants, okay? Then what are you going to do with those five different species of plants? You are supposed to add hydrogen peroxide, okay? So your method mark is to add hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Now catalase is already present in plants. Okay. So then immediately what you have to do is you also you have to measure. So basically after you add H2O in plants, your final um, result is to measure the height of the foam. The height of the foam is your dependent variable. So you get one more mark here. You get one mark for the method. Now, now, the height of foam is also affected by other factors. Now, what is this? Temperature, pH, um, the size of plants, the age of plants. So then you state your control. So you can use the same temperature using a thermostatically regulated water bath, or you can use the same pH, you can use the same size of plants, you get two marks. So how many marks have I got till now? Two, three, four, five. I just need one more mark. And I have two whole more points I can add. That's all it takes. So you can either uh, conduct the experiment with no plants in the H2O2 and see if there is any change to H2O2. So you can see that there is foam building up above the H2O2 to see if it's broken down. Okay. But um, that's basically your control. So you get one mark. And the safety is repeat thrice an average plot graph. You get one mark. So now I'm going to like put this down carefully like in steps. So the hypothesis is that catalase activity is the same in all species of plants. So now we need to investigate the effect of a species of plant on catalase activity. That is on the breaking down of hydrogen peroxide. So we'll use five different species and make sure you write different. You use five different species of plants. You put them in a test tube. You add the same volume. You must try this. You add the same volume of hydrogen peroxide to each um, um, setup. You then start a timer and um, time the experiment for five minutes. After five minutes, take out a ruler and measure the height of foam present above each setup. Jot down the um, height of heights of foam in a table. Okay. Um, ensure that the temperature is kept constant, the pH is kept constant, and the same size of the plant is used. 
the temperature can can be kept constant using a thermostatically regulated water water bath then you must repeat um, the um, experiment three times and average your results plot a graph to see any trends you can set up a control by conducting the experiment that is adding h2o2 to a test tube without any plants and then see if hydrogen peroxide is broken down because according to because according to our knowledge catalase is the only thing that can break down hydrogen peroxide in this experiment so that is your answer um i hope i was able to break this down for you i don't know if you understood a lot but um i feel these tables will really help you guys um if you have any questions feel free to email me i hope this helped you a lot of kids have asked me this like to do a video about this so i'm doing it and um please like this video comment any suggestions or if it helped you and subscribe to my channel let's get through this together